and welcome to another Macintosh Monday. I'm Mike and I'm back to talk about new Apple products that kind of stealth dropped last week. So obviously the story I reported on last week about the M2 Pro and M2 Max just being possibly delayed wasn't true because a few days later, Apple went ahead and dropped those new MacBooks as well as a Mac mini and a HomePod surprisingly. We're gonna talk about all of them talking about them in order of my personal excitement. So of course I'm gonna be starting with the MacBook Pro. So yes, the 16 and 14 inch MacBook Pro refresh has been announced by Apple. It is coming out on January 24th. The base model for the 14 inch is $199.99. The base model for the 16 is $24.99. And basically it seems like it's a moderate upgrade from last year's MacBook Pros. There's nothing too amazing. It seems like generally it's 20 to 30% faster. They gave some examples for the M2 Pro. They said it was like 25% faster for Xcode and 40% faster for Photoshop. And then the M2 Max, they just basically said that the CPU was 20% faster and the GPU was 30% faster than the M1 Max. And they also made a brief mention about supporting 8k displays and that is because they are actually bringing hdmi 2.1 to the macbook pro the reason that this is important is because there are probably going to be a lot of displays coming out that support hdmi 2.1 so for example this tv i use behind me as a monitor is an lg oled and it supports hdmi 2.1 and it does 4k 120 hertz but you can only get that if you're doing hdmi 2.1 if not you're stuck at 4k 60 so when i use my mac mini on this tv i'm stuck at 4k 60 so this is going to allow you to drive 4k displays up to 240 hertz as well as drive 8k displays so that's why this whole hdmi 2.1 thing is a big deal they didn't say it was hdmi 2.1 in the presentation but Obviously it is. So one thing I noticed when I went to Apple's fancy splash page that they always do for new products, they have these performance charts for the M2 Pro and Max, and they compared it to the M1 Pro and Max, obviously, as well as the last Intel MacBook, which they didn't have to throw that in there. I mean, come on, that's like, what, a three or four generation old Intel chip at this point? Of course, it's not gonna perform nearly as well. In their defense, there probably are people that still have Intel MacBook Pros, and they probably wanna see what the performance difference is, so I won't give them that. What I was specifically looking for was the M2 Pro versus the M1 Max. Usually, generationally, you want to outperform your last highest chip with the chip below that. So that way you're being like, okay, well, this chip is so good. This is as good as our best chip from last generation. And for the most part, it does. Like at Photoshop and a bunch of other things, it seems like it beats out the M1 Max, except for in video transcoding and video editing. Now, Apple tried to be shady and they made the bar all gray so you don't pay that much attention to it. But I noticed in both of those categories, the M1 Max is actually better. And the reason I'm even bringing this up is because there are probably gonna be some sales on the MacBook Pros with the M1 Max chips. They were on sale not too long ago around Christmas time. And with them now being discontinued, they're probably gonna be on sale again. So there's a small chance I don't know how much they're gonna discount them, but there is a small chance that they could possibly be the same price or lower than buying an M2 Pro MacBook. And in that case, if you're just doing video editing, that's probably gonna be a better buy than buying an M2 Pro if that's the chip that you were looking at buying. But in general, I usually recommend just to keep an eye out for discounts, especially when a new generation drops because that's when you can usually get the better sales. But overall though, if you're doing anything else, it seems like the M2 Pro is better than the M1 Max. But outside of the performance of the new HDMI port, basically nothing else has changed with it that's still physically the same, which makes sense. They just redesigned it. I mean, you can't expect them to redesign it every year and it's a great design, so I don't see why they would change it. Some of the things I saw anecdotally going around online, like on Reddit and on Twitter, where people just seem kind of disappointed by the new MacBook Pros. And yeah, there's no reason to upgrade if you have the old one. I do agree with that, but I think they're fine. I mean, if you're buying a new MacBook Pro, this is gonna be the best version of that. Like I said, I think they're overall fine. I don't see why people are like, not really upset about it, but disappointed like it's what i expected i didn't expect a huge leap just generation especially after we saw the m2 macbook pro and macbook air come out i kind of put my expectations in line of what this upgrade was going to be so i think it's fine i mean i'm not in the market to buy one but it seems like a normal upgrade is like around 25 to 30 percent that's that's fine and that's why i'm going to rate it i'm going to rate it f for fine now the next thing i'm kind of excited about because i do have the m1 mac mini and that's the m2 mac mini that's also coming out on the 24th and that's gonna be 599 for the m2 version and 1299 for the m2 pro version that's right they are dropping the high-end mac mini that's the most exciting part now personally i'm not going to upgrade to the m2 the m1 serves my purpose is great and it handles everything i could write it musically but the m2 pro is tempting because remember i talked about the hdmi 2.1 earlier well, the M2 Pro version is also gonna have HDMI 2.1, so I could drive my TV display 
at 4K 120 and get buttery smooth scrolling and everything. That'd be nice, but I don't know if it's worth me upgrading for. Obviously, the performance is going to be way better than my M1, but I also have a Windows desktop that's pretty beefy anyway, so I don't really need that performance like that. But yeah, I'm glad that they finally brought back the higher-end Mac Mini. It's similar to what they had before. They always had the lower-end Mac Mini and the higher-end one that was similar to the MacBook Pro configuration, so it seems like they finally brought that back. And also, the Pro version has two more Thunderbolt 4 ports, so it has four all together, whereas the base version has two. Now, there is a big price jump. Again, this is what Apple's always kind of done with the higher end version of the Mac Mini. Like $599 for the base and then $1299 for the Pro. There is like the step up model, which I think is like $799, which is still a $500 jump even from that one. That's kind of a lot. It's kind of a big jump, I'm not going to lie. But if we look at the cheapest M2 Pro MacBook Pro, that's $2,000. So it's still saving you $700 if you're looking at the M2 in general. So it's overall a pretty solid deal, to be honest. Now, what I'm curious about is what they're going to do with the Mac Studio. Are they just only going to do a Max version of it now? Because it'd be weird to have an M2 Pro and Max version of that, considering that they have the M2 Pro version of the Mac Mini. If they release an M2 Pro Studio, I guess the justification could be that you would theoretically get better performance, like render performance or for more intensive tasks because the cooling system is better. But we'd have to see if there's even any throttling with the Mac Mini version of the M2 Pro at all for that to even be a thing. So we'll see what happens when they finally release an updated studio and maybe a Mac Pro later this year. Overall, I'm gonna rate this Mac Mini announcement F for freaking good. And last, but definitely not least, is the HomePod. So this will be releasing February 3rd for $300, so cheaper than they released the original HomePod, but the price that it got to by the end of its life cycle, it, is the thing that I'm most excited for. I've had a HomePod since 2019 and I was not happy with it when it first came out. It was missing some basic things, like not having voice recognition initially when it launched. If you allowed Siri to read your messages, it would just read your messages to anybody that asked. That was It was pretty terrible. And then of course you didn't have multiple users either. Now that they've added that stuff, Siri has gotten a lot better. I actually feel like towards the end, the HomePod was kind of worth it. And then they discontinued it right after they released the HomePod Mini. And now they're bringing it back. And I have a feeling it's probably because the HomePod Mini did really well for them, which maybe they should have just launched with the Mini in the first place. But I'm really excited for it. And back when I did my video in 2019, when I was not that happy with it, I did mention like, hey, you can get one of the Sonos speakers for like $200. But after heavily investing in Sonos products, they're still great. I have the Sonos Ray behind me connected to my computer along with two of the Ikea Symphonic bookshelf speakers as rear surrounds. I have a Sonos Beam in the other room with two more of those speakers and I have both generations of the Sonos lamp from Ikea. And they sound really good, but they don't sound nearly as good as the HomePod. As people pointed out in the comments of that video and I was like, yeah, but is it worth it considering how bad the assistant is? But now that the assistant is good enough, it's not there as far as like features when it comes to like Google Assistant. I think for Amazon's Assistant is way better in understanding you and responding correctly because I had Echoes and I got frustrated and got rid of all of them and I exclusively just use the HomePod and HomePod Minis around the house now. And yeah, it's way better at responding, it's way faster and I'm excited to see it come back. And audio wise, like I said, there's nothing that sounds like it. Apple said all that stuff about like, oh, it calibrates itself based off where you place in the room. But it's true, it sounds great no matter where you put the speaker at. like. The thing is fantastic, but I did notice when I got the minis, the original HomePod is slow, especially for things like handoff and responding to tasks. I'm glad they're bringing it back because I might actually upgrade. I do want a faster HomePod with hopefully better sound. Like the thing sounds fantastic, so I'm really excited for this. I'm going to rate this an F for fantastic. I rated everything Fs. I'm getting out of here for the day. Let me know down below which Apple product you're most looking forward to. You have a great rest of your day. Peace out.